We ended last week by talking about graphs of straight lines, so graphs of what are called linear functions, and that leads into naturally what we'll be talking about today, which is not just linear functions, but section 2.1 on all functions in general. And what I have up here written behind me is a very loose definition, a very informal definition for what a function is, but loosely, a function is a rule of assignment that takes an input, or for us, our inputs will always be numbers, so it takes a number, you input a number, and you output exactly one other number. The set of numbers that you plug in is called the domain of the function, and the set of numbers that you can possibly output is called the range of the function. So, for example, let's just, our functions will not usually be given tabularly like this, but uh, just to illustrate a point, uh, here's an here's a example of a function. So the domain, maybe I'm allowed to plug in the number 0, 1, 2, and 3. Okay? And my range, I'm going to output numbers like 5, 7, 0, minus 1, and uh, 6. Okay, so what do I do? So I'm claiming this is going to be a function. So here's my numbers I can plug in. Here's my inputs, and here's my possible outputs. So here I'm just going to build a function. Uh, when I plug in 0, I output 7. When I plug in 1, I output 5. When I plug in 2, I output minus 1. And when I plug in 3, I output 6. Notice that none of these inputs ever give me 0, but that's OK. That doesn't matter. Uh, this is a function. So think of a function like a machine. This is how often people think of these things. It's a machine. You plug in a number, you get out a number. That's all that happens, right? You plug something in, you get something out. So here my function is defined in the following way. I plug in 0, I get out 7. If I plug in 1, I get out 5. If I plug in 2, I get out minus 1. If I plug in 3, I get out 6. And by the way, this wouldn't be a problem either. Maybe I change my function. Maybe when I plug in 3, I output minus 1 as well. That's totally fine. 2 and 3 are allowed to output the same number. There's nothing wrong there. But, for example, suppose I did something like this. Here's my domain range. So here's 0, 1, 2, 3. We'll go with the same outputs. 5, 7, 0, minus 1, and 6. So suppose I build my function this way. Uh, 0, plug in 0, I get 5 as my output. Plug in 1, I get 0 as my output. But here I'm going to do something strange. I plug in 2, I output 7, and I output minus 1. And then I plug in 3, and let's say 3 also outputs minus 1. What's the problem here? The problem is with 2. The problem is with 2. When I plug in 2, I'm outputting two different numbers, 7 and minus 1. And that's a problem, because if you look back at our definition here, our definition for functions is you want, when you plug in an input, you have to output exactly one number. So 2 here is outputting two different numbers. This is not a function. Right? Meanwhile, this one is, because for every input, you have exactly one output. So we have to avoid stuff like that. Something like this is, is not a function. Uh, but we don't usually think of functions, or, or at least uh, define functions tabularly like this. We use equations. So let's, let's get into something a little, little bit more familiar. OK, so here's something we were looking at last time. Here's the graph of a uh, straight line. It's y equals mx plus b. So it's already given in, in, uh, in slope-intercept form. And x here, x is the input. So you choose what x is going to be. You choose which value you want to input. x can be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, any real number at all that you want, square root of 2, pi, whatever. You plug in this input. So you choose x. And what do we output? Well, y is the output. And it's equal to, it's equal to x plus 3. Right, so you plug in a number, you plug in any old number, and it outputs the value x plus 3. So you plug in x, we get out x plus 3. So this is a function, and of course we, uh, we know how to graph this. Um, slope is 1, y-intercept is 3, so pretty easy to graph this guy. y-intercept 3 has a positive slope of 1, something like this. <coughs> 
And uh, every single point, this is the point I want to make. When, I'm talk, when I say this is the graph, what do I mean? I mean if, if x, y is a point on the graph, that means that when I plug in this x value, so my x-axis is the values I plug in, right? I choose an x value, I plug in an x value, and I get out the corresponding y value. All right, so every single point on this graph is, in some sense, a solution to this equation. But what I, what I want you to think of now is you plug in x, you plug in a value from the x-axis, the output is the corresponding value on the y-axis. This one was easy to plot. It's easy to plot the graph of this, of this function because we, it's a straight line, right? We know how to handle straight lines. But let's do something slightly more complicated. And let me erase this. All right, so how about this one? y equals x squared minus 2. So this is not a straight line. It's not of the form y equals mx plus b, and it can never be written in that form because we've got this x squared term. But it's still going to be a function. It's still, you plug in x, and your output is x squared minus 2, which is a uniquely determined number, so it is a function. And the question is going to be, sketch the graph just by plotting points. We're going to develop in the next section more advanced techniques for sketching graphs of things, but you can always do this with any function, no matter how complicated, no matter what level of mathematics you're in, you can always try to sketch graphs just by plotting a few points. So what I mean by that is we're going to take a few input values, uh, we're going to take a few values for x, we're going to plug them in and see what the y values are as an output and plot those points. So x, uh, let's just go with a few small numbers. Uh, minus 3 we'll plug in, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. And we'll compute the corresponding y outputs. Alright, so let's do the easy one. Uh, what happens when I plug in 0? Plug in 0, my output is going to be y equals 0 squared minus 2, so 0 minus 2 is minus 2. Right, so I plug in 0, this is my input, I plug in this number 0, I get out, negative 2. Uh, we'll plug in 1, we get, our output is going to be 1 squared minus 2, 1 squared minus 2 is minus 1. Let's plug in 2, our output is going to be 2 squared, so 4 minus 2 is 2. Plug in 3, our output is going to be 3 squared is 9, minus 2 is 7. And, uh, just play this game with these other numbers, plug in minus 1, minus 1 squared is positive 1, minus 2 is negative 1, minus 2 squared is 4, minus 2 is, is uh, 2, and minus 3 squared is 9, minus 2 is 7. So this is how this function works. When we plug in these numbers, we get out these outputs, and my graph is going to consist of all of these, uh, all of these pairs. So, let me plot the x and y axis, x, y. So when I plug in x equals 0, I get out minus 2. That means 0 and minus 2, let's say uh, this is minus 2, this is minus 1. 0 and minus 2 is a point on the graph. And we'll move to the right here. Uh, when we plug in x equals 1, we get out minus 1. So let's say this is 1 x is 1, and when I plug in x equals 1, I get out minus 1. So here's the point 1 and minus 1. When I plug in x equals 2, I get out the value positive 2. So here's x equals 2, and here's 1, here's 2. So we're up here. Here's the point 2, 2. And uh, if I plug in x equals 3, I get out 7. So 3, 7 would be somewhere way up here. Probably even higher up, but I'm out of space. So we'll pretend that's the point 3, 7. And on the other side, we'll plot these other values. Uh, x is minus 1. Our, our y value is minus 1. So here's minus 1. We're somewhere around here. Uh, plug in x equals minus 2. We're at positive 2, so somewhere around here. 
there's minus 2 and 2, and plug in x equals minus 3, and we're way up here at 7, maybe somewhere around here. Okay, so there are several different points on the graph. In fact, exactly seven points on the graph. But uh, I can plug in any number that I want into this, right? So not just zero and one, I could plug in one half. I could plug in three fourths. I could plug in uh, 0.001256, right? I can plug in any number at all that I want. I'm just plotting the uh, integer values here. So if I did all those, I would have sort of outputs between these two points. And just roughly guessing, based on the plots that I've uh, the, the points that I've plotted here, just roughly guessing what this curve looks like, or what this graph looks like, it's probably something like this. Really just connecting the dots here with a nice smooth line. And it turns out that this is in fact accurate. This is what, uh, what the graph looks like. So this is the graph of y equals x squared minus 2. Okay, so every single point on this, every single point, uh, every single point x, y, or as I plot a few points here, these are sort of output, or sorry, input and output pairs. So you plug in the x value, you get out the y value. And this is how this works. When you, when you choose a point on here, when you choose a point that has coordinates x and y, it means when I plug in this x value, I get out this y value. And again, in the next section, we'll see how to plot something like this or graph this very, very quickly uh, without having to, to sketch it or plot any points at all. But this is a skill that you should have, being able to graph functions based on just plotting points and really connecting the dots is, is all we're doing here. So what I want to do is point out fairly quickly that uh, I, I don't want to leave you with the impression that every time you see an equation, it, it represents a function. So not all equations do. Uh, for example, here's, here's one that does. It's just a, it's, it's a linear function or a straight line graph given in, a, given in standard form. 3y minus 2x equals, equals 3. And if I, just, uh, if I just go ahead and solve for y, solve for y, what do I have? I've got 3y equal to, I'll well, add 2x to both sides, so 2x plus 3. And if I solve for y, all I need to do now is divide both sides by, by 3, right? So y is going to be 2 thirds x plus 3 over 3 is 1. And that's a function. You plug in a value for x, you get out a unique output. So this is a function, it's, it's, a, it's a straight line, right? It's a slope 2 thirds, y intercept 1. So this is a function. But, um, let me use the same space. But here's another example. How about, uh, how about this one? y squared minus x squared equals 9. So once again, I'll do the same thing. Let's try to solve for y. Solve for y. What do we have? We've got y squared, add x squared to both sides. y squared equals x squared plus 9. And now if I solve for y, what do I do? I have to take the square root of both sides, right? So we square root both sides. So square root of x squared plus 9. And so far it looks okay, but then you'll remember, hold on, uh, I have to consider both different square roots, right? If y squared is x squared plus 9, then y is plus or minus the square root of x squared plus 9. So what's the problem now? Well, the problem now is when you plug in an x value, you plug in an x value, so here we plug in our input, what do we get out? We get out two different outputs, right? We get out the positive square root and the negative square root. So this is not a function. Not a function. Uh, one input gives two outputs. Excepting the one special case where you output zero, because plus or minus zero is, is the same number. 
But if I plug in one input, I get, in general, two different outputs. So this equation does not specify a function. And in fact, if I were to graph this, Put my axis in the wrong place there. If I were to graph this, uh, the graph of this equation looks like looks like the following. Looks a bit like this. This is minus nine. Here's x and y, like usual. And you can sort of see. So, for example, if I plug in zero, if I plug in x equals zero, what's my output going to be? Plug in x equals 0, my output would be the square root of 9, which is 3, well, plus or minus the square root of 9, so plus or minus 3. So when I plug in 0, I output positive 3, and I output negative 3. Similarly, you can see that all over the place, right? If I plug in other values for x, I get all these sort of pairs of outputs. So we're going to formalize this idea. We're going to formalize this idea. You'll notice if I put it, if I were to drop a vertical line on this picture, it cuts through the graph at two different points. Uh, so let's let's formalize this idea. This is this is not a function, and the reason being is because I'm giving two different outputs for every input. But let's formalize this picture with this this vertical line thing that I'm trying to get at. Okay, so if someone gives you a graph, how do you tell if it's a function or not? How do you, how do you tell if it represents the, the graph of a function? Well, here's the famed vertical line test, which says the following. It says an, an equation specifies a function if every, this is important, not just one vertical line or some vertical lines, if every single vertical line that you draw on the coordinate plane in the coordinate system passes through at most one point on the graph. All right, so every single vertical line that you draw hits the graph and at most one point. So for example, down here in example A, this is just a nice linear, uh, linear graph here, straight line graph. If I draw a vertical line on this picture, it hits the graph at one point. And it doesn't matter which vertical line I draw, every single vertical line that I put in this picture is only going to cut through the graph in a single point. So at most one point. So this is the graph of a function. Similarly with, uh, with B over here, this nice uh, parabola, it looks like the example we did at the beginning of this class. Uh, every single vertical line that I draw cuts through the graph and at most one point, and again in this picture in exactly one point. So every single vertical line, so once again, this is a function. And the idea here is because my vertical line is only cutting through at one point, it means it's sort of uh, for every single input I choose, for every input, every x value I choose, I have one output. So one input gives one output. Meanwhile, if it's possible, so I'm not talking about every vertical line here, I'm just saying if it's possible to find a, even a single vertical line, just one vertical line that cuts through the graph in two or more different points, then uh, the graph is not a function. So for example, C, uh, and here it's not even just, I'm not looking for a single vertical line, it's true for every single vertical line. For every vertical line I draw in this picture, it cuts through my graph at two distinct points, right? This vertical line cuts through at two points, this vertical line cuts through at two points. In fact, they all do. So this comes back to the example we, I, I erased before this, which is you choose an input value and you get out two different outputs. So this fails the vertical line test. It's not a function. And lastly, this one's a little bit more interesting. You'll notice that uh, if I choose the right vertical lines, for example, if I choose this vertical line, sure, this vertical line only cuts through the function at one point. So does, uh, so does this vertical line. But to be a function, every single vertical line that you draw has to cut through at a single point or, or, or less. So it can, it can cut through at no points at all. That's, that's allowed as well. But uh, if I draw this vertical line, well now it's cutting through the graph at three 
different points, indicating that if I were to input this x value, I would output three different values. So it fails the vertical line test. It's not a function. So a pretty simple test to apply, a uh, pretty famous one, one that just about everybody who works in mathematics knows, and uh, I think pretty memorable. I think you'll have, have no trouble remembering how to apply this test to identify if a graph is a function or not. It's the, the famed vertical line test. So next up, let's come back to some of this terminology we started with. Right? Remember, a graph is a, is a rule of assignment. You plug in an input, you get out an output. And the numbers that you're allowed to input, the number of values that you can input into your function is called the domain of the function. And uh, what I want to do here is identify how do we find the domain, right? If I just give you an equation that represents a function, how do you identify what numbers you're allowed to plug in? And the answer is, in general, unless, you're, unless someone specifies otherwise, you're allowed to plug in everything that makes sense to plug in. So, unless otherwise specified, the domain of a function is taken, is taken to be all real numbers, is taken to, to be all real numbers, Except those that don't produce real outputs. What do I mean by that? Well, maybe you try to plug in a number and it causes you to divide by zero. That would be a problem, right? It wouldn't produce a real output, so it's not something you're allowed to plug in. So uh, that's what I mean here. It's, the domain is all possible numbers, all real numbers, except for those that, that just don't make sense to plug in because you can't possibly get an output. Uh, there's many ways this could happen, but for our purposes in this class, the only ways we could fail to produce a real output is, is something like division by zero that I mentioned, or possibly taking square root of a negative number. So that's really all we have to look out for. For us, uh, this means We only have to uh, to look out for to look out for division by zero division by zero and square roots of negative. So uh, yeah, let's just go through a few examples. These these aren't uh, aren't particularly difficult as long as you know as long as you know that this is all you're looking out for for division by zero and square roots of negative numbers. So we'll do a few examples. Here's our first one. Find the domain of this function y equals three plus x over four minus x. So. Uh, what am I looking for? Well, my domain is going to be all real numbers, except for numbers that cause me to possibly take a square root of a negative number. Well, notice there's no square roots in this expression, so I'm not looking for that. Or causes me to divide by zero. And when would I divide by zero? Well, I would divide by zero when 4 minus x is equal to zero. Right? And that happens precisely when x is 4. So that's all I'm looking out for. Uh, x equals 4 is a bad input. It's something I'm not allowed to input because it causes division by zero, I don't get out and out, but, but every other value for x, I can plug that in, no problem. So domain is going to be all reals, all real numbers, except x equals 4. And uh, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> Unless someone specifies otherwise, we just take our domain to be as, as large as we possibly can. So it's all real numbers except x equals 4. Uh, how about this one? y is the square root of, of uh, x plus 2. 
Can I possibly divide by zero here? No, there's no division happening. But I can have a square root of a negative number, right? So what do we need? For this to make sense, I need x plus 2 to be non-negative, right? I need x plus 2 to be bigger than or equal to 0 for this to make sense. If it's less than 0, we have a square root of a negative number, and that's a problem. We don't get out an output. So I'm looking for all values of x so that x plus 2 is, is non-negative. It's bigger than or equal to 0. By the way, notice the possibly equals to square root of 0 is, is fine. It's just 0. So it's, possibly, it's allowed to be 0. And uh, this means that x is bigger than or equal to negative 2. And uh, that's my domain. I believe for your homework, it will often ask you to, to use integral notation. So in integral notation, this is just uh, x bigger than or equal to negative 2. So it's from minus 2, square bracket to include minus 2, minus 2 to infinity. And this is our domain. All numbers in this interval make sense to plug in, and we get out an output. This is what the domain is. The domain is asking, what values for x am I allowed to plug in? So we'll just do one more very quickly. y is 3x squared plus x minus 1. A nice pretty polynomial of degree 2. Uh, what's the domain of this one? Can I possibly divide by 0? Well, there's no division happening here. And can I take the square root of a negative number? Well, there's no square roots here. So I don't have anything to look out for. Every single value for x that you plug in, you'll get out an output. So the domain is all real numbers. If there's no square roots and no division, then there's no problems at all. Domain is all real numbers. Again, I believe, uh, I believe for your homework, it would want this in interval notation, but all real numbers in interval notation is just minus infinity to infinity. So there's one more thing we need to do, which is talk about formal function notation. Uh, instead of sort of using a y, which indicates maybe you're thinking about a graph of this function, there's uh, the f of x notation. Okay, so we've been looking at stuff like this uh, so far. Uh, if I give you a function in, in sort of an equation form, so y is equal to 2x plus 1. And, of course, you know that this means, okay, uh, my input, I input x, and I output, I output y. Well, quite often people want to give names to their functions. We're working with many different functions at once. We want to give them a name. Uh, so the first name you go with is usually f f for, uh, for function. It's the name of the function. So I might indicate this over here by saying here's my function f. f is this function y equals 2x plus 1. But uh, if we're going to call it f, then there's, there's new notation that we'll use and it's somewhat better. I'll point out how it's better in just a second. But here's my new notation. Instead of plugging in x, well, <laughs> let me take that back. I do plug in x. I plug in x into this function f. Uh, but instead of calling my output y, we usually call it f of x. OK, so I plug in x. I plug in x into my function, and I get out f of x. So the notation here would now just be uh, and here's my rule of assignment, 2x plus 1. f of x is 2x plus 1. So you choose x, and you plug it into the function. So you plug in, and you get your output, f of x, and your output is 2x plus 1. So just to make this clear, this is usually read as f of x. Or to be very formal, uh, the value of the function f at the number x. Why is this notation particularly nice? Well, let me get into that. Let me show you an example. In fact, I don't need to erase anything. Uh, here's the problem with this notation. 
if you're working with this in a non-graphical sense, how do you sort of notate that you're going to plug in a value, say, 1 or 2 or 3 or whatever? In this notation, it's very, very nice because uh, now I can just use notation like f of 1. What does this mean? This means I'm plugging in 1 into the function. So I'm, I'm evaluating this function when x is 1. And when I plug in 1, what do I get? I get 2 times 1 plus, uh, plus 1. So f of 1 is 3. So f of 1 equals 3. This means when we plug x equals 1 into, into the function f, we output the value 3. This is where this is sort of superior notation, is when you want to talk about plugging in a particular value for x. So for example, f of 0, what do I get when I plug in 0? I get uh, 2 times 0 plus 1 equals 1. And so on, I could, I could play this game forever. I could plug in all different values, right? I could have f of pi, I could have f of uh, minus 10. I could plug in any number that I want. Uh, just, to really, uh, just to really bring this home, here's another example. g of x is going to be the square root of x squared minus, minus 4. So what is, for example, g of 5? g of 5, well that means I'm plugging in 5 into this function, so this would be the square root of 5 squared, which is 25 minus 4, or uh, the square root of 21. Meanwhile, what is g of, uh, what is g of 1? What's g of 1? Well, that would be the square root of 1 squared minus 4, which is the square root of negative 3, and that's a problem. So this is technically undefined. And square root of minus 3 is not a real number. So 1, when I try to plug in 1, I don't get an output. And this means that altogether, this means that x equals 1 is not in the domain. So you'd have to think about this here if the question was find the domain of this function. This is not what I'm doing here, though, uh, if you want to think about what the domain of this function is. But the point is that uh, g of 1 doesn't make any sense, because this means I'm plugging 1 in, and 1 is not in the domain of the function. Now there's one more thing that I want to do, just one very last thing in this section, which is plugging in numbers other than, well, plugging in really entire functions. So in, instead of having my input be a number like we just did, uh, let's plug in some other stuff. And what we're going to do here is we're going to produce new functions from old ones. So we can also produce new functions. rather than numbers. So for example, what I mean by this is here's my function. If f of x is, let's say, uh, 3x squared plus 1, then I can do things like I can plug in numbers like we just did, right? f of 2 is 3 times 2 squared plus 1. 3 times 4 is 12 plus 1 is 13. This is what we've done so far. But I could, I could do other things. Like I could, I could uh, ask what is f of x squared? So f of x is 3x squared plus 1. What is f of x squared? Well, what does this mean? This means, for example, f of 2 means everywhere I saw an x, I was going to replace x with 2. Right? I'm plugging in 2 for x. Here, 
This means literally the same thing. Everywhere I see an x, I'm going to plug in x squared. So f of x squared is going to be 3, everywhere I see an x, I replace it with x squared, 3x squared squared plus 1. Okay, so that's 3x to the fourth plus 1, because we multiply exponents together. So what have I done? I've sort of I've produced a brand new function from an old one by plugging in, instead of a number, I've plugged in an entire other function. I plug in x squared everywhere I see an x. And we're going to do a lot of this in the next section. We're going to do things like, uh, what is f of x plus 1? Well, that means everywhere I see x, I plug in x plus 1. So that'll be 3 times x plus 1 squared plus 1. And that is, maybe I should foil this out. Uh, I kind of like this form as it stands, but let's, let's foil the whole thing out. This is going to be 3 times x squared plus 2x plus 1 plus 1. And that simplifies to 3x squared plus 6x plus 3 plus 1 is plus 4. Why am I doing this? Because you can keep going with this game. You can, uh, you can even do things like, uh, let's bring this way up here because I'm almost out of space. So I could do things like f of x plus 1 minus f of x. So now I would take f of x plus 1, which we just computed, is 3x squared plus 6x plus 4, and subtract from it the original function f. So 3x squared plus 1. And that is the 3x squareds cancel. We have 6x plus 4 minus 1 is plus 3. So you can do all of these things, but uh, what, I, what I really want to point out, because we'll do a lot of this in the next section, is this guy here, whatever you have inside here, is just what you're plugging into the function. So you start with the original function, and everywhere you see an x, here it's just in one place, but everywhere you see an x, you replace it with whatever is inside the brackets. And that's all there is to it. Uh, in Math 151, you'll go on and you'll do a lot of stuff like this, where you plug in something and then subtract off the original function in building what's called a derivative, but for now, uh, in the next section, we'll be looking at just stuff like this. Oh, and I, I think that wraps up the section, so we'll stop here.